Hello everybody, it's uh, Jay Roby. In this video we're going to be looking at the book lines for the Scandinavian defense. It's uh, one of the oldest uh, black defenses in the uh, the world of chess. And it has been used by grandmasters on, on fairly numerous occasions, uh, including uh, um, Larson defeating Karpov back in 1979 and a lot of uh, recent examples as well uh, with current grandmasters. And basically the main goal of the Scandinavian defense is to, um, it basically gives black uh, momentum over white and um, it puts black into a position of kind of dictating where play is going to follow. So we'll take a look here at the, the book lines and then we'll explore some variations. And I've had a subscriber ask too um, if I could start to use um, Grandmaster Games uh, to show uh, examples of the openings. I think that's a good uh, good idea and uh, for this video here we'll be uh, referring to the uh, uh, Larson Karpov game uh, near the end of the video. So the Scandinavian opens as follows. It's a king's pawn opening from white and and the Scandinavian defense is uh, pawn to d5 by black and um, basically black is already attacking the pawn here so if white takes then uh, the Scandinavian defense line uh, can be reached and that's queen now to d5 taking white's pawn and from here the book line continues white knight to c3 and queen now to a5 and from here white plays d4 pawn black develops knight to f6 and white plays knight to f3 black can play a pawn here to c6 white can uh, develop the bishop to d2 and from this position here um, you know we can come into some different variations uh, but so far this is uh, pretty much uh, the book line here for the uh, Scandinavian defense so let's take a look now at um, you know what the defense has done so if we go back to the beginning of the of the game here uh, after white plays pawn to e4 and black plays pawn to d5 if white takes you'll notice uh, that white now has moved the pawn two times so basically what this does is it takes away white's extra move um, from the beginning because he's now moved the same piece twice in the opening so black's only moved his pawn once so now he's developing a piece on his second move so if you take a quick look at the board uh, black's got one piece developed and white has none developed at the moment and from here white needs to uh, gain a little bit of tempo back it develops the knight to c3 attacking the queen and black can move the queen to safety we'll also look at some variations where that includes a black check but uh, for now we'll stick to the book lines here and then as follows as we saw uh, play can continue as such so let's look at some possible variations here with the Scandinavian defense we'll go back to uh, the initial play uh, when black queen has taken the pawn on d5 white's developed the knight now attacking the queen um, the first is uh, queen to d8 now this kind of runs counter to the rule of try not to move your pieces more than once in the opening uh, but black can still have a sharp game here if it plays it properly uh, white's down a center pawn as is black so the uh, control of the center is still is still up for grabs depending on the quality of the play Another option here is the Patzer variation, and that's queen to e5, landing a check, and white can block the check, and then from here black can uh, try to take advantage of uh, the flow of the game and develop, uh, keeping, uh, keeping things going uh, smoothly. Another one is uh, a little bit rare, and that involves queen to e6 check. So queen goes down here now, landing the check. After the check is blocked, the queen then moves to uh, g6, attacking the weak pawn here. Um, so this is a little bit rare. Um, it's kind of tough to say um, how effective this would be, uh, considering the bishop could move uh, right back and, um, and keep going. And the last one is um, the Bronstein variation and this one has uh, had uh, a little bit more popularity amongst grandmasters uh, as early as the 2000s here and um, the Bronstein variation basically follows queen to d6 after the knight develops and from here the queen is still impacting a lot of uh, the center action here so you can see the queen can can go pretty much anywhere she wants to or even fall back if she needs to and then from here black can develop a very strong uh, push for the center so that's called the Bronstein variation another option for black after pawn captures on d5 is to develop knight 
to f6. And this basically, um, black is holding back on capturing this pawn um, for the short term. And play can continue as follows. So if white defends the pawn now uh, through c4, black can play uh, e6. And what this is called is this uh, leads into the Icelandic gambit. So for example, if white captures pawn, uh, black develops bishop. And now black has a uh, um, very good development here in the center. So it's given up uh, a pawn uh, in return for a stronger center position. And there's another way to reach this as well. Instead of playing uh, e6 here, black can opt for c6. So if white captures, uh, black develops the knight. Um, so still a nice little uh, you know, uh, influence in the center here. We have this knight attacking a number of squares uh, here, 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 here. Um, this knight um, on c6 is attacking a number of squares as well. Um, this one, this one. Uh, this one and this one and then the queen is still impacting uh, somewhat into the center and as well as the bishop so it's um, you know it's a giving up a pawn for a strong center position basically and this is uh, this is a variation into the Icelandic gambit now as with all openings and defenses there's always a way for uh, the op opposing player to uh, not get into those lines and white has a couple options to avoid the Scandinavian defense here uh, the first is uh, pawn to d4 instead of pawn takes uh, pawn on d5 uh, this transposes into the black mar dimer gambit or white also has the option of just simply pushing the pawn past um, to e5 and this allows black to uh, transpose into a French defense with uh, uh, its second move to e6 with the pawn. Another option for black if white opts to uh, avoid the Scandinavian defense line is to play something like pawn to c5 or bishop to f5 and this can lead into an advanced variation of the Karo Khan and um, it can uh, build up extra tempo for black. So those uh, cover pretty much the primary possibilities with the Scandinavian defense. Um, it's a defense that's been around for a long time, so there's definitely a lot of information out on it. And if you guys have anything to add or contribute, definitely uh, post your video or your text comments. Uh, but in closing off the video here, we're going to go through the game between uh, Larson and Karpov in 1979. And uh, Larson's playing black, and in this match, uh, he uses the Scandinavian defense uh, to uh, get the victory over Karpov. So we'll just go through the first few moves of the game here. And um, so Karpov opens up with King's Pawn to uh, e4, and Larson plays the Scandinavian defense, Pawn to d5. Uh, Karpov accepts, and from here you can see that the book lines uh, ring true. Uh, so from here, Karpov develops a knight to c3, and Larson pulls Queen to a5. Um, Karpov develops Pawn to d4 and uh, Larson plays knight to f6 and then Karpov plays bishop to d2 so uh, it's pretty much identical to the book lines we'll just go through the, through the next few moves here um, to see uh, you know what Larson's uh, strategy was so he moves now bishop to g4 attacking the queen and the bishop here is protected by the knight so Karpov plays bishop to e2 and at this point Larson just trades the bishops off and uh, Karpov uses his knight to take back because it opens up an attack on the queen with the bishop. Uh, so Larson just moves the queen to uh, b6. So you can see already, um, you know, Larson's got uh, a lot more direct attacking capabilities uh, building up here into the center. And I'll just flip through the next few moves. You'll actually see that. Um, uh, Larson uh, builds up a, uh, always maintains a solid presence in the center of the board here, forcing Karpov to uh, kind of work around that. And uh, as it leads up to the end of the game, um, this control of the center and the utilization of the pieces is, is very key. So uh, it was a good example of how the book line uh, Scandinavian defense has been used by uh, Grandmaster level players. And uh, that pretty much sums it up. So take care. Hope you enjoy the video.